Hi guys. Well, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I thought I'm gonna continue with the, say, inshore fishing. Seems how you guys really enjoyed the uh, how to fish the seaway and well, catching kingfish in a broad water or in shallow water. And you don't mind a few of the flatted ones either. So what I was gonna do today mainly is talk about how to catch a certain big fish in the Gold Coast broader. Gold Coast Broadwater, sorry. And this one's gonna be more aimed at the guys in kayaks and small tinnies that don't go offshore. Because these fish are a dime a dozen offshore. You can catch them pretty much anywhere. But in the Broadwater, they're a bit harder to find and the guys in the small boats are missing out. If they're too worried about fishing the seaway or the pin bar, this place is a lot easier and a little bit safer. And what I'm talking about today is catching, well, large mulloway in the Broadwater. And this spot where I'm going to show you and talk about, this is back to what I grew up like in Victoria. It's good old Mulloway fishing. You're going to need to spend hours there. You have to be very, very quiet. Spend hours in the middle of the night, freezing your ass off. But if you do find one, it won't be a schoolie. It won't be a little six or eight kilo one like the Seaway, 10 kilo. They'll be 15 plus. They'll be 30 pounders plus. They're usually good fish. Okay. So we'll get into the, get into the video. What I'm going to do is to show you the, the gear, which is basically the same gear I use for offshore, because you're going to be fishing fairly heavy structure. Um, the rigs are going to be very similar, and then I've got my trusty old board there, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and just give you an idea where I'm talking about. So first things first, the gear. So chasing Jewfish, basically the same as offshore. So I'm going to be, you run around about a 60 pound leader, usually a tough trace, works really well. For rod number one, it's going to be with the sinker, so you're going to be fishing down just off the bottom, like you do offshore, on your live bait just off bottom. So good quality hooks, I run BKK, Gamagatsu, just good sharp strong hooks. They're only a 5 over, but generally when I'm doing this, I'm using pretty big baits, so I'll explain in a minute. So the hooks I'm running are usually a 7 or an 8 over for this type of fishing. You're going to want some decent sized ball sinkers, okay, you're going to need quite a bit of weight for these live baits to put them down, and just some nice, you know, heavy duty swivels, just in black, you don't have to go over the top, you're too big, just something nice and strong, rolling swivels, okay, so the first rod, basically, when I'm doing it, I don't use a saltiga in the broad water, this is my 15 kilo outfit, so 15 kilo, a torium, it's got 15 kilo braid on it, 60 pound leader. And the rig is back to basics running sinker rig. Okay. So back to your old sinker, swivel, 60 pound trace to snail hooks. You can see the size of those hooks. Decent hooks and a good length apart. Okay. That's the first rod. That one, when you catch these low baits, you'll drop them down to the bottom. Once again, wind them up, about a metre off the bottom. Put the rod in a rod holder, with the ratchet on, and a light, fairly light drag. Okay, these fish will pick up mouth, mouth baits. This is the hard part, you gotta hook them. They're not like offshore, they won't actually grab and run, or generally they won't. They'll mouth and muck around with it, and you gotta, yeah, you know, be gentle and pick your time when to set the hooks. So circle hooks don't really work for this style of fishing. Usually octopus works better. The second rod I usually use would be a spin reel. This also is a 30 pound outfit. Okay, once again, 60 pound leader. Um, generally I won't have a sinker or a bead on, it'd just be two snail hooks on a 60 pound leader. That's it, no beads, no sinkers. I'll take them off because they're ready for offshore. Okay, just snelled hooks. This one, you'll be casting out and the bait will be free swimming around the surface. You'll stay up the surface. I know it sounds strange to Jewies, but they'll actually be up the surface feeding. They do in this spot, chasing the mullet. That's what the bait we're going to be using. And the third rod is when those two are out, without making a heap of noise, because you've got to be really quiet in this spot. I'll have another spin rod, spin reel, on this big bugger. This is also a 30 pound outfit, but this would be casting dewy lures. In this spot, I'm gonna be casting along rocks. So you want a nice big, slow rolling lure. You don't want a bright, shiny thing, 
for some reason, Julie's prefer a duller colour. They will hit the shiny things, shiny laws occasionally, but you'll have more likely for just a dull colour. And just something that's a very slow roll. You don't want a fast shimmy, a very slow roll, and a small bib. This thing only wants to swim about a metre under the surface. It's big tail kicks, big, big slow tail kicks, just under the surface. So basically, it's acting like a mullet because that's what they're there, that's what they're going to be there feeding on. And that, I believe, was white when I bought it. And I just painted it up. I just put some scales and stuff, made it sort of look like a mullet. Not too bad of a job for a guy I can't really paint. A little messy, but not bad. Okay. So they're the outfits. They're the three things you're going to be trying at this spot. And what we're going to do now is show you where I'm talking about. A lot of guys already know what I'm talking about already. Okay. Not many people do this nowadays. Most guys are heading offshore to catch them because it's just so easy offshore. And then a lot of schoolies and stuff. But when you're doing this, if you do hook one and get into one, it's going to be a 30 pounder, more than likely. Plus, they're usually good fish doing this. Okay, hopefully, I adjust my camera without taking too long, guys. So, our uh, trusty board, turn the light around. Hopefully, it's not in the way too much. Can yeah, we see there? Oh. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so what I'm talking about is North Wall Away Break. So what we've got here, we've got the seaway over here, right? There's the main seaway. This is a North Wall. We're heading north here. I've got it up there, north, south, east, west. So we're heading north up the main channel. This is Wave Break. You've got the North Wall Rocks or Wave Break here, okay? Everyone knows there's a deep hole here off the end of the rock wall. You've got your LA Special Marker here. And this is where you're going to be chasing the dewfish, this deep hole here. Okay, especially around this time of year, July, August. And there's a couple of main things you've got to wait for for this, for this place to really fire. They're probably there now, um, but it really fires when something happens. And I'll explain that in a minute. So basically, you want to be fishing this deep hole in July, August. And what I'm talking about, this spot really fires when a lot of the sea running mullet come through. Okay, so if you wait for the sea running mullet, I haven't heard much the last couple of years, but we used to get a lot of mullet on the beaches, and at times when are running tide in the seaway, along the north wall here, they'd be all schooled up on the surface, like mullet everywhere, and I'm talking like big mullet. And don't think they're too big for dewy baits. They're not, believe me, they are not big. But when you get the mullet in the seaway, and you hear them on the beach and in the seaway, this place here will really fire, because when they're in the seaway, they're also along this wall here, and they're schooling up on the surface. Big sea running mullet, they're big boys, and they've been in schools. So whenever that happens, and it's a westerly wind, middle of the night, freezing cold, go chasing dewies. there would be a good one there waiting for you. Okay, so what, how we fish this, is when you got a, you want to fish this on the last two hours running tide, okay, off here, last two hours running tide. So when the tide's coming in and going this way and around and up the channels, you've got the big sandbar over here. Eddy forms here, okay, so there's no current. So what we do is basically drop our anchor just near the rocks here, or even easier nowadays because most boats have got spot lock or electrics. There's a drop off here, there's a nice drop off here. So you want it on the edge of the eddy. So you want to be inside the eddy here where there's no current. And you want your first bait with a sinker on it, drop straight down off this drop off, right down to the bottom in the deep part. So your bait's sitting here. Okay? Put in the rod holder and be patient. With the other rod, the un unweighted mullet, once again, you gotta go catch the mullet, so there's, a, <laughs> there's the other trick. With the other mullet, we actually throw it out here. I like to throw it out here and let him come through the eddy and just swim around freely. He just unweighted, just swimming around. Dewfish will come up. For some reason, they're, they're already up along the rocks here chasing the mullet, so they're up near the surface anyway, most of them. So throw one out, unweighted up here, and let it come down the current and swim around the eddy by himself, just near the surface. That's a good way. That's a really good way to get smashed. Um, it is, it's a fun way, but you've got to keep on winding them up and checking because a lot of the time you'll try and head back towards the rocks or under the boat and be a pain in the ass. So just don't try him out and forget about him because you, you'll tow your braid all through where it doesn't want to go. Just keep an eye on him, make sure he's out swimming around, out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so while you're doing that, you've got two baits out. You can stand at the front of your boat or the side of the boat and cast your lure up along the rock wall here. Right in close, hard up against the rocks. Because the Jewies will be hunting right up hard on these rocks, chasing the mullet. 
So that's why I'm only running a shallow dive or something that dives down less a meter or less. A big heavy rolling and just have it nice and just roll, just back along the rocks. Cast after cast. And that's also a good way to get jewies. And I've cooked some absolute crackers along there. I've got freaking dust at bottom. Absolute monsters over the years. Because the buggers are like Taylor, they run you past the rocks and rub you off. That's happened to me a couple of times. Okay, so what we'll do, I just got up here. Just a little thing to remind me and just give you an idea. So best time to, of year to try this is usually July, August. And hopefully the sea running mullet are in the seaway or you might hear them on the beaches or you might start seeing them around. In daytime and nighttime, you'll start seeing mullet around the rocks. If you start seeing big mullet in schools around the rocks, go chase jewies. The best time to fish here, usually when it's really quiet, middle of the night. So I usually fish between 1 and 4 a.m. So it's really quiet. It's usually a light westerly wind, freezing cold, no one around. Best time to try that. Sit there, early morning, say midnight to 4 o'clock in the morning. You want to chat, do it at last two hours of running tide. Last two hours of running is great. Once the water slacks, you can still fish for a while. Have hooked a few fish over the slack water. But once it starts running out here, go home. The whole, the whole thing changes. Just go home. Or go sit out at the end of the north wall and chase the dewey out there. Okay. And you saw the rigs, one's a running sinker rig straight down on the boat, the other one's a free swimming. And just keep, keep an eye and make sure he doesn't keep on trying to get into the rocks and snag you. And you know, tangle your braid. And the other one's a big lure, castle on the rocks. It's a great way to fish here. And if you've got a kayak with lights on it, a jet ski or a small tinny, great spot. Just remember, got to be quiet. No banging sinkers, no thumping around. Because you'll spook them here. It's so shallow and so quiet. Or noise will spook them. Be very quiet. And the other thing I'm going to tell you, I have been there with friends and you do hook other things here. And they keep on thinking they've got big jewies. A lot of the time they haven't. It's sharks and stuff. You do get a few sharks and things here. Chasing a mullet, of course. I'll give you one tip. If you hook something here and it goes against the grain, against, against the current, and heads this way and towards the seaway, against the current, you haven't got a jewy. It's probably a shark or a stingray or something crap. That's something you don't want if it's going against the current. If it goes with the current, if it stays down deep and goes with the current or around here, but generally it goes along up, up here or starts going across with the current, that would be a good jewy. Jewies go with the current, okay? Because they're lazy, they'll go with the current, and if you're there and they're up here, they, make, they use the current against it, so you've got to pull a big fish against the current if you're at anchor. And they use the current against you. Jewies are like that. They'll always seem to go with the current. If they're going against the current, you don't want it. Just break it off. It's, it's not going to do you any favours. Um, okay. It's a fairly basic sort of a one, but hopefully it'll help, help you to catch a big jewfish. And if guys, if you do go here and like hook into a good one or get one, I'd love to see it or hear about it in the comments. Um, and if you got a kayak, that'd be really impressive. Like I've always thought about it, but I'm always, you know, a bit of a chicken shit, too scared of idiot boat drivers. But if you got a kayak, a confident, um, it's welded up, yeah, and if you hook a jewy, jewy there in a kayak, you'd probably get towed down the river, but it'd be fun, and I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, don't forget, August 1st, the how-to series is coming up. You have a few knots, rigs, how to make and you know, repair a few things, just all sorts of different things. Don't forget about that starting August 1st, and I'll see you next week. Okay, guys, thanks for that.